in the name of the Lord. Those of uh, who have joined us on the live stream, you as well. We pray that our fellowship tonight will be productive. This will be our 41st exposition of the book of Amos. We're going to be in the 7th chapter, verses 7 through 9. <clears throat> now, there are numerous uh, traits of God, characteristics of God, that are made known in the Scriptures. And it's important to know these. This is not a popular pursuit, but it's a necessary one. A number of these uh, traits were revealed to Moses, with whom God spoke face to face, mouth to mouth. He wasn't like other men. He wasn't even like other prophets. He stood over and above most of them. This isn't to denigrate them. This is just say that there's not there is not an equality among prophets. He told Moses he was merciful and gracious and long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. That's quite a revelation. It wasn't made known prior to this. That was well into the history of the world. But two and a half millennia. He also made know that he reserves mercy for thousands. That's conducive to a lot of thought right there. He reserves mercy for thousands. And he has a certain posture toward the guilty. He has made know that his way is perfect. The way God does things is, things is perfect. He doesn't, doesn't make any difference whether men think it is or not. It is perfect. He's, he's righteous in everything he does, and he's known. You learn a lot by his judgments. His judgments tell you a lot about him. His commandments are pure. He's full of compassion, and he's slow to anger and great in power. These revelations, which are quite abundant the Lord's confirming he wants to be known this is why he reveals these things this is just not a mere formality he wants to be known in fact it appears he delights to be known he takes particular good pleasure in being known if you want to please God and you should. You will please him no more than you do by knowing him. Amen. That, that's good. That, that pleases God. Now, men don't think of God this way. As, as, by nature, they don't, and many times in religion, they don't. It's hard for men to even imagine a God that wants to be known. It's hard for them to even come up and invent a God like this. In fact, nobody has yeah. invented or created a, an imaginary God that wants to be known. It's just like a foreign, mm -hmm. foreign concept. What? What? The reason for this is a, a God that is not known provides license for sin and for deviation from the truth. Is there something about not knowing God that wakes sin up and makes it express itself? So that the more a more a person or a people are ignorant of God, the more sin breaks forth. This is the way it is. The, the knowledge of God is like a bulwark against yeah. against sin. Now, men may not know this when they fail to know God, but this somebody needs to know it and tell it. That's the way it is. So when God is not known, men are more quick to sin. So where, wherever there is a vagueness about God, and I tell you, brothers and sisters, 
This is so pervasive, you cannot imagine how pervasive it is. There are so few people, percentage-wise, that have a cogent view of God that is mind-boggling. I'm talking about church people. It should not amaze us that sin is running rampant. <clears throat> now, the prophets are raised up, among other things, to dispel this ignorance. They would do it largely by announcing judgments and things like this, but they were making people known, making God known to the people that his wrath and indignation are aroused when people don't know him and they live as though he wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is his nature. It's aroused. Even a child, if they know something's going to aggravate their parents, they refrain from doing it. But this, even this juvenile level of understanding has departed from the professed church. Now, something we're going to find that before God punishes people, he always makes it known. He always warns people. This is another one of God's traits. He doesn't like just break out unexpectedly with wrath. He announces it ahead of time, pleading with people, because he doesn't take delight in the death of the wicked. God doesn't obtain a lot of pleasure by executing wrath. But this is his nature to do so. So with that in mind, we're in verses 7 through 9 of chapter 7. Thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said unto me, Amos, how about that, called him by name, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. And the high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Uh, you got to, you have to be close to God to get a revelation that like that. God doesn't just say this to anybody. So this is an intriguing text, and it will tell us a lot about God. He showed unto me. It's the third time Amos has said something like this. He showed this to me. Third time. He said it in verse 1 and verse 4. He said it in this, and he's going to repeat it again in the 8th chapter, verse 1. He showed, he showed me. Another version said, he let me see. Most versions do read, he showed me. Now, I was interested in the uh, technical definition of the word showed. It just doesn't mean it's like a, like a, a glancing vision. I'm, you just glanced at it and that was it. It's out of the corner of your eye, so to speak. It, it doesn't mean that. Academically, it means to, it's looked at. It's inspected, it's perceived, and it's considered. See, it's a subject of concentrated, focused thought. And what is shown is intended to be that way. Academically, that sounds easy enough, but it isn't. Academically, academics deal with theoretical knowledge. In fact, that's what the word, the word actually means that. Yeah. The English word, in dictionary word, describes the approach, that kind of approach, academics, as impractical, visionary, theoretic, rather than practical. <laughs> that's book learning. That's the truth. So, well, I learned, well, you, you, you went above the normal. Academics 
doesn't have the requirement of understanding. Some people, that doesn't mean a person can't use it properly, I understand, but I'm afraid if religion is approached just like warehousing information in the mind, and this is not, this is not what I showed me has to do with it. Wasn't it, here's something else that I would learn, something else I could put in my bag of knowledge. It goes further than that. Not this kind of learning. When it comes to learning from God, we must dispense with this academic view of things. Amen. The Word of God and the things of the Spirit of God are never impractical. Amen. Never theoretical. Right. Always to be treated as, as the absolute truth. <laughs> now what Amos is being given to see in no way is considered to be novel interesting but really not pertinent to to life the very fact that God has made these things known that God made them known makes them relevant whatever God says is automatically relevant because he's God yeah. who's overall and he doesn't speak irrelevant novel passionately interesting things this isn't the way God speaks Just as he said he would, surely the Lord will do nothing except he revealeth his secret. His secret. You can't discover God's counsels by study. His secret. You can't discover what God has planned to do by academics. You, it's secret. You can't, like, decipher it, put, put a lot of scriptures together and kind of come up with a, it's secret. And he reveals it to his prophets. Before he's going to do something, he lets it... Why? Because he wants to be known. See, he wants to be known. I cannot count a number of times that I have people have said to me personally, what does that have to do with us now? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't tally up how many times I've actually heard that comment. What does this have to do with us today? Well, whatever God says has a lot to do with life today. When any person receives insight or is showed, God showed me, or is shown something by God, or God opens the eyes of their understanding, or enables them to perceive, it has to do with their life. That's why it was, why it was given. The man does live by every word of God. That is the truth. <laughs> well, he showed me, and the Lord was standing on a wall. Made, and the wall was made by a plumb line. So, see, what does that mean? It means it was a perfect wall. This wasn't a lopsided wall. It wasn't like the Leaning Tower of Pizza. It was perfect. It was not in the wrong direction. It didn't give an incorrect perspective. You're standing on a wall made by a plumb line. That is, the wall was pure and perpendicular. Yeah. Perpendicular means standing at right angles to the plane of the horizon, exactly upright. So it's perpendicular, fits, the, fits into the entire globe perfectly. Position perfectly, perfect right angles. There is absolute perfection. One of the things that has caused archaeologists to marvel is that the pyramids were all perfectly perpendicular. They are mathematically perfect. They can't figure how they did it with three ton stones. They can't, and only had manpower. In this world, things like this are very unusual. But in God's economy, this is the only way, th the only things that are perfect yeah. are brought up. So there's nothing about this wall that would cause it to lean one way or the other. It's not lopsided. It just, it's not in error someplace. He's, Lord's standing on the wall that was made or built with a plumb line. A plumb line is a is a line with a weight on the bottom, and it is is perfect vertically. Vertically, 
doesn't make any difference whether they had them 3,000 years ago or today. Yeah. Yeah. Plumb line is the same. Right. You have a six-story building, you, you hang it from the theoretic six-story, you build the wall by that plumb line, it'll be perfect. Right. Stand on the wall built by a plumb line, and he had a plumb line in his hand. The Lord had a plumb line in his hand. He does some measuring. He's going to check out the structure of Israel. He will examine whether it measured up to the building's specifications or not. Like he planted a vineyard for a particular purpose, I was going to measure it to see if it produced what he said. He will not measure Israel by the standard of love or of mercy or of grace or of long-suffering, although all of those are traits of his character, but this isn't how he does his measurement. He measures those he has chosen. He measures them. So a person can't just boast that he's been chosen if he is chosen, he's going to be measured. Uh -huh. Amen. God's going to see if he stands up to what he chose people for. He evaluates those he saved. Uh -huh. This is God now. Yeah. I don't believe this is known or believed at, at large. Uh -huh. There's just too many sloppy Christians. There's too many people, they're not living wholeheartedly for God. They don't know this. They've missed this. Somehow they've missed this. Yeah. That God measures what he builds. Yeah. He has a plumb line. He evaluates those he's saved and he examines those he's delivered. See, men tend to think if you delivered them, then you're kind of out of the danger zone. See, you know? he measures. He delivered Israel. I was going to measure. I'm going to measure him. He's remove. He's he's going to remove men that invent a God that doesn't measure. If everybody, for instance, a few days will be the Lord's Day again. People, a lot of people in a town will gather together and, as they say, go to church. Although it's the church that does the going, you understand. But few of them will know that they're, God's evaluating that church and the individuals in the church. He's measuring them with the plumb line. He will not be pleased if their walls are crooked. That's not how they were built. Not be pleased if their vineyard has... Sour grapes or wild grapes. That's not why it was planted. Now, this is an aspect of God that has almost been buried here in the theological rubble of spiritual Babylon. Satan knows he cannot capture the hearts of people that fear God. He, know, he knows this to some extent. I'm not sure how convinced of it he is he's so wicked but he he'll do everything in his power to have people place their trust in a changing God that's not an evaluating God he'll he'll do everything in his power to do it I don't know how you could account for the state of things today in Christianity apart from this blinding perception, imperception that God actually does not judge his people. Yeah. I, yes. Okay, even, even if they have a God that, that will inspect to some degree, they've created a doctrine that says even if he finds something, he'll love you anyway. That's right. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. Yeah. It's a serious, very, very serious condition. God's still standing on the wall made by a plumb line. With a plumb line in his hand, that's what Jesus was doing to the seven churches of Asia. He had a plumb line in his hand. That's what he was doing. Mm -hmm. 
He was major in those seven churches. In five of those churches, he said, a wall's crooked here. Better do something about this. I'm going to remove them. I'm going to remove you. There won't be any more church here. So he's assessing. The Lord said unto me, Amos, oh, that, I, I just like that. It's just, you see, if the President of the United States, whatever you may think of him, spotted you in the audience and said, hey, Robert, you know, that'd be it. Be kind of, un kind of unusual, wouldn't you? You wouldn't, you wouldn't say, oh, boy. That, you, you like that. But God, think about God. Say, Amos, Amos. Yeah, tell me, Amos, wh wh what do you see? Has God ever said something like that to you? What, what do you see? What do you understand? Well, some people just take them a few seconds. They could tell you everything they know. I have to tell some people like this, and I got a couple of minutes. You can tell me everything you know. What do you see? See, what the Lord shows is of no value unless it's seen. Amen. Yeah. The Bible is precious, yeah. but it's worthless if it's not seen. That's right. yeah. If it's not understood, you just as well have a blank book of blank pages. Uh -huh. It doesn't have any power to those who don't see it. What do you see? Well, what would what did what do you see? He says he saw, he saw the Lord standing on a wall that was made by a plumb line with a plumb line in his hands. You got here, you got a you got the Lord to see, you got a wall to see, you got a hand to see and a plumb line to see. Some folk would have said, I see a perfect wall. That'd be what they saw. Some people say, well, I, I see the Lord. That's what I see. But Amos, he said, I see a plumb line. <laughs> you see how perceptive that was? I see, a, I see a plumb line. I gave a little picture there of, of a, a hand holding a plumb line. And if you were to ask some people, what do you see there? Some people would see the background, they'd see the overall building, they'd see the plans, they might see the hand, but Amos saw the plumb line. I see a plumb line or a weighted line. If used correctly, this will ensure the wall is built properly. And it's also used to determine if an existing wall is still proper in its proportions. And God said, I will set, I will set a plumb line in the midst, in the midst of my people. That's in the midst of Israel. See, you'd have Israel. You'd have a tribe in Israel. You'd have a family in the tribe. You'd have a leader of that, Jesus and each one of them could be measured, but he's going to measure the whole. I mean, could you do you believe that God could view the whole of Christendom and hold it to a standard? I do. Yeah. 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 Well, that's not a real church. This is not even how God thinks. Right. If they call themselves by his name, he thinks of them as a church. Yeah. And he evaluates yes, them amen. as a church. Mm -hmm. And if they have a false prophecy in there, he tells them what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And if left their first love, he tells them what, they, what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that there is a sense in which God views the entirety of Christendom, and it is a stench in his nostrils. Yes, amen. Amen. It constitutes the largest mm -hmm. religious body in the world. 2.5 billion people say they're Christians. That's, that's almost twice as many as Muslims. Belgians are 1.5 billion. 2.5 billion that say they're quote like of Israel. Where the name 
God doesn't take this casually. You can't dismiss it and say, yeah, but they're not really the church. Oh, you can't say that. Whenever anyone wears the name of Christ, he judges them accordingly. Amen. I'm going to sit in the midst of Israel. See, they're all either of Israel or not of Israel, but he's not talking about it from that angle here. He's saying they all... I'm going to take everyone that came from Abraham that's alive and I'm going to set a plumb line in the middle of them. And I'm going to measure them. I'll let down a weighted line. The Good News Bible says, I'm using it to show that my people are like a wall that's out of line. <laughs> I'm saying a plumb line as a standard in the midst of my people Israel. <coughs> now the standard used to measure is a, not a variable one. He just it says, I'm going to use the Jerusalem church as the standard. Okay. <laughs> That's not what he does. Standard is the perfect standard. You've got to see this. I want to, <coughs> I want to make this as, as clear as I can. From one point of view, it's perfection. From another point of view, it's the covenant that's operational. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm gonna, here's the new covenant, here's what, here's what I said the new covenant's gonna do, and I'm gonna measure the people by this, <coughs> by this covenant. Amen. With Israel, he measured them by the first, uh -huh. <coughs> first covenant. Now, I want to make a comment about this covenant. He may, he's going to measure the covenant is the plumb line. That's what I'm saying. The, the covenant is the plumb line. Yeah. Now, let's establish what a covenant was because there, there's a lot of confusion here. Some people think the Old Testament or the Old Covenant is Genesis through Malachi. Yeah. Some think that the covenant was the law, the Ten Commandments. No, it was the words of the covenant, but it wasn't the covenant. Mm -hmm. The covenant was the agreement That's right. Amen. that was struck. Yeah. <laughs> Here's how the scriptures read it. Now, the, the words of the covenant were the thou shalt and thou shalt not. Right. Now, here's what the scriptures say about that. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people. And laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Uh -huh. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. That was the covenant. Yeah. We will do. That was the covenant. They agreed to do yeah. everything God said to do uh -huh. all the time without any deviation. That's what he said. All the commandments, all the ordinances, all the time, no deviation, not so much as one. They said that we'll do it. We'll do it. That's the covenant. Now that's how it's going to be measured. He made that agreement. He said, "Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which is if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord." Covenant was the agreement. To live that way. Now, faith had no part at all in the first covenant. No part at all, not even an infinitesimally small part. The law was not of faith. Galatians 3.12 says, The law was not of faith. It didn't require faith. Faith wasn't involved. The covenant was do it, not believe it. And so the curse of the law was everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them, they were mm -hmm. cursed. All right, now he's going to hold this yeah. plumb line up. Did they do everything? Mm -hmm. They said they were going to do everything God commanded. Did they hold it up? Mm -hmm. Did they hold up that promise? Did they fulfill it? After many centuries of long suffering, God will now place the plumb line in their midst gave them adequate time mm -hmm. that if they were capable of getting the walls straight 
after it got lopsided. They had plenty of time yeah, uh -huh. to do it. But they didn't get it done. The plumb line's going to show they didn't. The Lord will not look for like a high percentage of compliance. He's not going to look for a majority of the time. He's go it's got to be at all the time or it doesn't count at all. This is how God measures his people. By the covenant under which they've lived. Now, in the case of the churches, Jesus has laid a plumb line next to them. The new covenant is, they shall all know me from the least to the greatest. I'll be their God of choice. They'll be my people. I won't remember their sins anymore. I'll be merciful to their unrighteousnesses and their sins will their iniquity so I'll remember no more. Did, when God measures the churches, did they measure up? Do they know God? Yeah. Is God their God of choice? Where is he not? He's going to measure, going to measure the churches. See, the churches in Asia, those five flawed churches, they didn't measure up. Yeah. They were a contradiction of what God said would happen to the new covenant. Yeah. Some of the things that would happen to the new covenant, do they have a new heart? Do they have a new spirit? Are they following on to know the Lord? Do they hear my son's voice? Are they following my son's voice? See, that's the perfect plumb now. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the plumb line. Yeah. That's the plumb line. Mm -hmm. Somebody, Jesus said it right in the midst of his people. He set the plumb line. Is this happening? Mm -hmm. A stranger, they will not follow. Yeah. All right, how do they measure up yeah. on that? My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. How did they measure up to that? He said that church is going to be a bride for Christ. Are they a suitable bride? Is the modern church suitable to marry Christ? Is it a chaste virgin? Is it? The plumb line. See the if we don't, we, we got to pay attention to this now. Because this is what God's going to do through Christ. He's going to set the plumb line in the midst of the churches, just like he set the plumb line in the midst of Israel. He yeah. says, I told you mm -hmm. that the church is the bride, the lamb's wife, and that she's making herself ready. Mm -hmm. Are you making yourself ready? Are you doing all unto the glory of God? That's the plumb line. It's a plumb line measurement, see? Right. If someone isn't, they, we don't say, well, you got to try harder. No, you got to do it. Yeah, amen. It's not a matter of trying harder. Uh -huh. The plumb line doesn't give a devi devia allow for deviations. Right. Mm -hmm. The plumb line says they're zealous of good works. So the Lord lays the plumb line in the midst of the church. Are they zealous for good works? Well, you see what I'm saying here. Amen. Have they separated themselves from defilement? Or are they touching the unclean thing? Are they sanctified? Are they walking in newness of life? See, these are all plumb line yeah. measurements. Right. Amen. If these things aren't found, is, is it just that the church is def defective or deficient? That's not it. Uh -huh. It's got a bad wall. Yeah. It's been built wrong. Yeah. Something seriously out of whack here. Huh? Plumb line in the midst. Are they working out their salvation with fear and trembling? So that's a plumb line measurement. You know, there's an awful lot of midget thinkers in the professed church. They have small thoughts about God. And false. God's like a, somebody said it. You're in one of our meetings, Brother Aaron, I think, said religion, Christianity has become a hobby. Yeah. Uh -huh. Become a hobby. Yeah. Plumb line. I set a plumb line in the midst of my people. So he's going to measure them by the standard he himself has established. Yeah. Sister Bart. A lot of times, whenever you have a wall that is deficient or not plumb, it 
reveals a lack in the foundation. Lack of what? A, a lack in the foundation. Oh, what, yes. what the Amen. wall is built upon. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so serious whenever you have the deviation in the church is because they left the foundation that's right. of Christ mm -hmm. himself. Amen. Yeah. And you remember that uh, Paul told us that if any man defile the temple of God, him will God destroy. Yeah, yeah. So if this wall is like uh -huh. lopsided, whoever caused that is going to be destroyed. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. You put that down your book, yeah. that's going to happen. That's Nobody right. better tamper. With what God built, Amen. if any man defy, try to put wood, hay, and stubble on this foundation, it'll make the wall. Yes, that's make right. the wall lean one way or the other. Won't yeah. hold. Make the wall won't stay perpendicular. Amen. Any person or group of persons who claim to be followers of Christ will be measured by the divine plumb line. Mm. Then God tells <coughs> Amos, "I'll not pass by them anymore." Mm. Now, he doesn't mean walk past them. He means I'm not going to overlook their sin anymore. Yeah. I'm not going to wink at it anymore. Mm -hmm. I will not spare them any longer, the NIV says. I will never again will my eyes be shut to their sin. I'm, see, hundreds of years they'd been in this state uh -huh. for hundreds of years. And some people concluded it must be all right, you know, it must be acceptable. But it wasn't acceptable at all. But God said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to overlook this anymore. I'm not going to wink at this anymore. I will no longer turn away my, my turn away from punishing. Was God out of character here? Mm, no. no, he, no, he wasn't out of character. He was. He, he proved that he is long suffering, yeah. which accounts for the endurance of their ways. But he is also jealous mm. and angry with the wicked every day, which is confirmed by he says, "I'm not going to do this anymore." Now, you see, this is something what's involved when the scriptures say it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That's what it's talking about. Amen. To live in such a manner as you, as God had to take the matter in hand. Yeah. This is a frightening thing. And the high places of Isaac shall be desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with a sword. Now, this is God's response to the bad measurement of the plumb line. Manners that have been tolerated for years are now not going to be tolerated anymore. This is the fall of Babylon, much like this. It has existed for some time, but pretty soon judgment's going to come against it and it's going to fall. The toleration. Why did God tolerate them for so long? Why did he just get rid of this nation? Well, God's working out an eternal purpose. Yes. There was a particular point of time, a date, if you please, mm -hmm. when the word would be made flesh and enter into the world. Mm -hmm. And things had to proceed until that time. There had to be this, the nation had to be in place until that time, for unto us a son is given, yeah, unto right. us a child is born, see? Mm -hmm. So the nation had to exist until then. So it's in view of that mm -hmm. that he tolerated yeah. all this period. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because he was so tender toward him. <laughs> that really wasn't it. He's, even when he meted out judgment in, those, in the old time, he said, and, several, and I give several texts mention this, he said, I will not make a full end. Yeah. I will not expunge the nation. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the Messiah. Because yeah, right. yeah. the seed mm -hmm. of the woman is coming. See, yeah. that's why he wouldn't destroy the whole nation. <clears throat> but there'd be a remnant yeah. preserved that would sanctify the nation. Now he said, I'm going to the high places are going to be desolate. These were the places they dedicated to idolatry. They are found throughout the land. The people, quote, sacrificed in high places. It's people of God. It's idolatry is what he's talking about. 
priests had burned incense from Geba to Beersheba, and it wasn't to God. There were also the high places of Avon, the sin of Israel, Hosea 10.8. Mm -hmm. It was said of Solomon. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father, only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. Yeah. I think it's still people like that. What's God do with people like this? Well, people like this deteriorate. It gets worse. That's right. They can't just maintain this, I love the Lord, but I'm going to burn incense. Uh -huh. Pretty soon it was burnt incense. Yeah. And heathen women and all kind of idolatry dominated Solomon's life. And yeah. God was angry with him because he appeared to him twice and yeah. rent the kingdom from his hand because mm -hmm. of his ways. Yeah. Instead of Jeroboam, who was over the ten tribes of Israel, he made an house of high places and made priests to the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. So already, see, <laughs> deterioration is, yeah. is set in. Instead of Israel, they provoked him to anger with their high places. Moved him to jealousy with their graven images. This is Israel we're talking about. Jeremiah revealed they built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. That's to burn their children of the god Molech. Israel actually, some people in Israel offered their children, burned them up. To the god Molech, he said he had his hands like this, and there was a fire in the hands, and they put their children in in the hands of Molech and burn them to death as an offering to Molech. Israel did that. Yeah. Now we understand that the Babylonian captivity cured them of idolatry, but it was a long process. <coughs> <coughs> Here Israel is referred to as Isaac. Did you notice that? The high places of Isaac. He refers to them as Isaac again in verse 16. He calls them the house of Isaac. Now in this, God is underscoring these were really descendants of Isaac. They, they weren't this nucleus we understand, but they really did descend from Isaac. These were not like Gentiles that feigned being Jews. This, this isn't what it was. These, these were actually Jews, a whole house. That's what it, they were actually descendants of Isaac. There were a body of people who departed from the faith of their ancestor. It was not through any fault of Isaac. I understand. He was a righteous man, and God is pleased to be known as the God of Isaac. Now, it might be counter, well, these people weren't really Israel at all. As it is written, not as though the word of God had taken on effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. But from the standpoint of, that's from the standpoint of God's election, they're not of Israel. But from the standpoint of privilege, they were fallen Israelites. Now, the same kind of reasoning I hear today applied to the churches. They say, well, that, these churches aren't really churches. See? That's not the real church. They brush it aside as though that exempted them. No. No. They are, they are like the church of Thyatira. They're real church, like the church of Sardis, like the church of Laodicea. They're real churches. But they're on the way out. They've been unfaithful. So you can't dismiss... Babylonian churches by saying, yeah, but these aren't even the people of God. It, it's not that simple. And God, God's people shouldn't take it that way. He sets the plumb line in the midst, and wherever his name is named, for whatever reason, the plumb line is dropped down to see whether they measure up. There are those who are 
wicked and slothful servants. They really did receive a stewardship. They really were employees of the master. They really were. Judas was really an apostle, and he'll be judged as an apostle. Yeah. The plumb line of an apostle yeah. will be let down by Judas. And he'll say, does it measure up? He fell by transgression that he might go to his own place. You yeah. see what I'm, uh -huh. what I'm saying here? Yeah. The wicked angels will be judged uh -huh. by the plumb line of holy angels. Yeah be found out these are out of plumb. Amen. They left their habitation. Yes. The devil himself mm. will be judged by the plumb line of a cherub yeah, that's right. because he was an, an anointed cherub. Yes. So he'll be measured by what a cherub is. Yes. And he'll be found to not measure up. Amen. <laughs> Quite a thought, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> The sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. These were the idol temples that the Israel built. It said of Israel in Hosea 8.14, Israel hath forgotten his maker and buildeth temples. Not, not to God, uh, to idols. Solomon built structures in high places for Ashtaroth, the abomination of the Zidonians, for Chemos, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Solomon did that. His wives carried his heart away. Now God is going to destroy all these buildings. He's going to set the plumb, the plumb line for a building erected to God. He's going to set the plumb line. The tabernacle and the temple are going to be the standards in this plumb line. Yeah. They don't measure up, they're going to be destroyed, mm -hmm. taken away. Sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. Yeah. I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. It said of this king Jeroboam, king of Joash, not the, the king of Nebat, they're two different Jeroboams. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who also made Israel to sin. God once used this son of Joash to save Israel. It's written of him, and the Lord said not that he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, but he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, the son of Joash. That's this Jeroboam. It's just, it's just terrible in here. But now he's going to put the plumb line to Jeroboam yeah. for a king. Plumb line for a king of Israel. Uh -huh. And he's not going to measure up. Yeah. Yeah. He, now, later in this book, it's, it says that Jeroboam died by the sword. Mm. Would die by the sword. But that, that was not a true prophecy. That was a word delivered by Amaziah. If you read the read from chapter, uh, it's verse 9 on, you'll find this is a word made by Amaziah. The sword was against Jeroboam's household. Not against, not against him personally. So you see, Amaziah twisted this, <laughs> twisted this prophecy. <coughs> Do you see this plumb line all the way through here? Yeah. This plumb line to Israel, plumb line to the kings, mm -hmm. plumb line to the sanctuaries yeah. and the temples, the plumb line. Yeah. The same as of the church, the plumb lines to the church, the plumb lines to a local congregation. Yeah, There's a right. plumb line. Uh -huh. There's a plumb line for an individual believer. There's a plumb line. Yeah. There's a plumb line for families. There's a plumb line. Yeah. See, there's a, there's a plumb line by which we're razored. Amen. And it's a perfect yes. plumb line. Amen. Unlike the world, we're measured by perfection. Yes, amen. That's the standard of measure. Perfection is yes. the standard of measure. Amen. Well, you can see that there's a there's a lot a lot yeah. here. But Bob, tell you know, a plumb line works in the world because we have a constant. It's called gravity. Yeah. And when you put, you can tie a rock to a line. It doesn't yeah. matter. But it'll be perfect That's because right. gravity is consistent. Next That's year, a right. hundred years from now. Gravity is the same, yeah. so it's it's you, in this plumb line you're talking about. It's consistent because it's 
it's tied to God's righteousness. That's so right. it's the same the day he made the world to the day That's he right. ends it. His righteousness is the same. That's right. So it can be used as to measure these to measure everything. That's right. Yeah. It's it's sobering, isn't it? To, yes. To ponder being measured by God. This this is a sobering thing. Amen. Amen. But God, that's what judgment is. Judgment yeah. is measurement. That's what it is. So on the day of judgment, the plumb line is going to be dropped down. Amen. Consider that He's given us forewarning. That's right. Where He, we, yeah. we know, we we can expect it, and actually, Christ has made us anticipate the judgment. Amen. We can say, "Thy will be done on yes. earth." Amen. Amen. With our hearts. Uh -huh. yes. Thy will be done on earth. I want to pass your measurement now. Yes. Yeah. I want. So, so when a person who passes the measurement in that day will, will hear, "Well done, good and faithful servant." Amen. See, that'll be you pass the measurement. Yeah. So you want to now, mm. as much as in your lies, live up to the what God has said His people do. Yes. Amen. Yes. These, these things have continued. The Savior said, "Our Savior said that the Spirit comes and convict the world concerning sin." Righteousness, righteousness and judgment. That's right. That's right. So these things have continued, and they've gotten more. Uh, what's the word? That, well, we know more about them. Yes. They, they haven't gotten more necessarily, except that we, more's been revealed. More clear. About. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. More clear and, 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 and more broad. So yeah. Yeah. This conviction. Those of us who believe, of course, these things have become very clear. Those who don't believe, well, it's the same result right. as it's always been for those who rejected God, Since refused to retain the knowledge of God. Since Jesus has died, I, I don't know that I'd say he's redefined, but the plumb line is, has been perfected yeah, yeah, yeah. since Jesus took it's sin away. Yeah. We That's can right. see it clearly, That's if right. you will, yeah. if you will. Yeah. And, and what man can, how man can measure up, see, has changed. Now that sin's been taken away and the yeah. devil defeated. Amen. Yes, Brother Judah. When you went across this point of how the Amos saw the plumb line, not anything else, mm -hmm. but that he saw the plumb line, I thought the standard is what's supposed to stand out. Mm -hmm. um, That's if, if it wasn't mm -hmm. for that plumb line, the wall wouldn't have been as perfect as it was. Mm. So the perfection of God is reflected in what he makes, but we shouldn't worship the reflection, but rather the God who made it perfect. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another thing I saw about the same issues that what he saw, he saw what God was doing. Yeah, that's right. And that, that, you know, that if you can see what God's doing, then then yeah. this this measuring up, see that this is what it's all about. If you can see Christ that He's reigning and that He's He has all power in heaven and earth, well then what do you have to fear? But you gotta see what He's doing. That's right. Yes, yes. Mr. Barb. Yeah, there are going to be certain things made known that aren't necessarily expressed because the Lord knows the hearts, the Lord knows uh -huh. the reins, mm. knows all things. Everything is open. Yeah. But I was considering his question to Amos in this time of measurement, what what do you see? Mm -hmm. What is it that you understand that I'm working? Yeah. And so equating that to the measurement of the Lord in his people is that part of the evaluation or the measurement of his people that the Lord is going to call for an expression of what we have received well, from him. Very good. Mm -hmm. What Amen. is it that you have learned? Your perception of what I am Amen. working. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you see? Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Like an accounting. The servants came in and you gave me five talents. I have five more here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He saw. He's going to hold you accountable for what you've seen. That's right. Yeah. He saw the talents as something to be employed. Yes, yes. that's right. Not as a, just a gift. Uh-huh. Yeah. Anyone else tonight? Yes, yeah, it's Aiden. Because Christ is our judge in the plumb line. You see the importance of being in Christ and Christ being in you. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, in a sense, he's the plumb line. He is yeah, the plumb amen. Line. Yeah. Right. So when we look outside Christ and try to measure up to the plumb line, mm -hmm. this just despair now because it's not going to happen. Yeah. Amen. But through Christ yes. and his his fellowship and salvation, the plumb line can be in you. Yeah. Amen. Again, all judgment has been given to the Son. That's uh -huh. right. That's right. 
Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee, Lord, for this revelation You gave to Amos. In our the perception, we've seen the plumb line, Lord, and we desire to pass the test of the plumb line. We ask for grace to help at the time of need, alert spirits, and determination to make it to the end of the race. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> 